I had to click the uh, view policy button before it let me um, <laughs> let me start the recording now. Some new new feature. Okay. okay. Can you see my screen and me when I do this? Alan, can you maybe right click on me and put uh, right click spotlight? Spotlight me. I can do it actually. Just see. Can you see? Can you all see me well, or is it not just good? And then I should probably change it. Uh, hang on. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I think. Yep. Looks good. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, good. All right. Uh, I'm just testing new stuff. So I'm using OBS uh, virtual camera just to uh, try something. Uh, if it doesn't work, just uh, unmute and shout. Well, don't shout, but tell me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. And uh, so the next would be. All right. And oh, there's more people joining. I can hear it, so I'm just waiting just yeah. a couple of seconds as we accept them inside, and then I'll try to F5 this. And it's not going through the right desk. Uh, me and PowerPoint. Let me try this like this. Oh. Ah, damn it. Uh, slideshow. Uh, obviously, I'm on the wrong. Ah, here we go. That's going to be better. Can you see the slides? Yep. We're good. I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can, oh, hear, I can you. hear you. Great. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay. Could you hear me when I was? Showing the slides. Yep, we could. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I had no feedback, so I guess it's the presentation mode. Damn it. Okay, let me do it otherwise uh, in another way. That's going to be quicker. I am so unprepared. Um, too many microphones. Okay, so prepare. Okay. This is going to go. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. All right. I'll do it like this. Uh, never mind. So, hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, good to see you. Um, it's the first one for 2021. Hopefully, this year is going to be better than the last for everyone. And um, we still have um, some content. Uh, available from last year. So if you if you go to the website uh, dscommunity.org, you can find everything we did last year. Uh, you can see the meeting notes in the community calls, and um, you will be able to see uh, the recordings that we posted on YouTube. And usually, there's a uh, you can see was presented some blog articles and things like this. I will go through in a minute. So today. Um, we are quickly going to look at uh, the recently released DSE modules. Um, so what has been released recently, what has happened uh, across the DSE community. Uh, we will see, we will discuss very quickly um, some repositories, old repositories usually, that um, needs to be moved off uh, github.com PowerShell. So it's uh, better probably to put them all in the same place. So we're going to discuss which ones. And there's, as an example, XGEA, which needs to be moved back into under DSC community. But that one is being replaced by GEA DSC. So that's, uh, we need to discuss what we're going to do with it, probably archive. And uh, we'll see what we can do and we'll see with the other ones. And then I will quickly uh, remind for everyone, because it's a new year, where to find some content and ask questions. And after this quick uh, uh, few points, we'll let uh, Daniel talk about renaming the default, the default branch for the DSC community repositories. 
and uh, we'll explain why and we'll explain um, uh, what it includes and then what we need to do for the Power Plants tools to work after that. So very quickly, so what we're doing is uh, renaming the branch to main. So uh, we'll, we'll go through um, the principles with Daniel. Uh, so Daniel, maybe you can do a, a quick introduction of why and where it came about and um, what uh, took so long. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. So so I think it, this goes back to around August last year, GitHub announced um, publicly that they were going to start any new repositories were going to have the default branch name changed from master to main and obviously this was this was driven out of a lot of the you know discussions happening in the the, the globe the world around what was the appropriate use of those that name so github went ahead and made that change um and so any new repositories created from that point forward are all all have the default branch branch named as main um, so we thought, well, let's, you know, obviously to support that and uh, make it a little bit easier if you're, you know, building new new resources, um, we want to make sure that, A, we have a process to rename existing um, repositories over to use, um, use the name main, but also so that we can confirm that any new repositories being built or new DSC resources being built, the tooling, you know, sampler, DSC tests, DSC, uh, DSC resource tests and DSC resource uh, doc generator and all those sorts of things, they all worked with this new naming convention. Um, it was not, we weren't going to say this is a mandatory change. We, we left it up to individual repository maintainers to decide whether they chose to uh, move, we just wanted to make sure there was a, a seamless transition and that it was a set of instructions to support people who wanted to do the move. Um, and as part of that transition, we did a whole lot of testing um, and then we decided, well, we'll go, go ahead and start making those moves. So a good chunk of them have been renamed and you may have noticed there are still a number that, are, that haven't been renamed and those are either in progress or we were just waiting on, uh, you know, if there's is a number of PRs open, we wanted to make get some of those PRs through before we did the rename. Not that that's actually that disruptive to those PRs. It used to be more disruptive, but it's actually thanks to changes by the GitHub team, it's actually less disruptive. Um, and as part of that process, we released a blog post, um, which the original version was much more complicated than the new version. Thanks again to Git, uh, Johan for identifying some new GitHub features that made that process a lot uh, easier. So what I'll do uh, when after when when we um, when we're ready, I'll take you through a quick, you know, 50,000 foot uh, view of how to do that rename. And, and it is pretty simple. You can probably do it in in an hour, depending on how long your, your builds take to run and how fast you can get a code review. The code changes are not major. Um, they're mostly repetitive and just saying to a few files around things like, um, you know, the git version YAML uh, file and, and the, the build definition itself to say, this is now, this is the default branch name. So yes, yeah. uh, there we Perfect. go. Yes, so uh, yeah, I just want, so we don't, uh, I just wanted to comment that we, we're not forcing anyone to move to that new things. I just want to remind everyone that that's the new default uh, in GitHub. So don't be surprised. And if you start a new project, then that will be the new default. So um, just for these reasons, uh, for us, obviously, we prefer when we have uh, consistency, but uh, because it's a bit of work, we're just not pushing it on, on anyone. If we come across a repository and then we feel we feel like we can, uh, we can make the change. Maybe we'll send a PR and we'll do it. If you need any help, then you can just find us. And then obviously there's the, the blog post we discussed, which is here. And and we'll send the link anyway, but you can find it uh, in the dscommunity.org website. And then obviously, as always, you can find us on Slack or Teams or whatever. Next point. So uh, that's the releases since last call. There's two main releases only. And quite a few uh, preview releases. Um, if those have been tested and if you want to get them as a major release, as always, please contact the maintainers. If you can't find the maintainers, then um, you can just uh, go on Slack and then you can ask us and we can either track them down, try to ping them, 
or maybe we can just uh, make the release for you uh, if everything looks all right. Last time I tried to do that, actually there was a breaking release that I didn't spot and I had to unlist, which was Active Directory DSC. And I don't think it's been fixed uh, yet, so we still can't release the latest version of uh, Active Directory DSC, but we should fix that pretty soon. Uh, there were some sampler updates. So as always, that means uh, the some of the build files may have changed. And uh, sampler is based on Plaster. And if you're not familiar with Plaster, Plaster is a templating engine if you want for uh, PowerShell. So you can just reapply just uh, the right uh, just the build files if you want uh, the templates of the build files from sampler onto your existing projects and you can see what has changed using git or just using a uh, plaster uh, it makes a backup of your file anyway if it overrides it and it asks you if you want to override it so uh, if uh, if you if you if you have created or if you have updated your um, DSG resource module in a long time, then I suggest you go on sampler and you just try to uh, do this over. So you try to apply the sampler um, the template over. Maybe Raymond's going to do a short video at some point and then Raymond's going to show you because I know Raymond's been doing it a few times now. So um, we should do a video on that. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to find us on uh, Slack. And um, I just want to, for everyone, I just wanted to remind you where you can find some information about uh, DSC and uh, everything we try to centralize in this DSC community.org. And you can submit articles as well. We actually welcome uh, contributions. And this is all in GitHub. So if you go to github.com, sorry, wrong one, and DSC community. This is where we've got the DSC community organization with all I would say pretty much all the uh, repositories and resource modules we manage all the codes is there but you also have the website so if you look at dscommunity.org it's actually all there it's a static website it's actually a github page and you can find all the content here you can make changes if you want to if you want to contribute changes to the layout and things like this feel free to to submit a pull request and you can look in the content you have everything in there like I think it uses it uses Hugo, it doesn't it? It's a it's a Hugo. Yeah, yeah it's a Hugo so. website. So the most I would say the it's one of, like the two most known static website generators are Hugo or Jekyll, and that's just one of the these two. So it's pretty standard, you know, uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript and HTML, CSS. It's nothing, and it's based on. Uh, it's based on a markdown, so you just write markdowns and automatically when the site is generated, you just trans transform that into uh, HTML and CSS. So um, so that's where the source is, and these are all the articles. If you want to create an article, just create a new of a new page, and, and that's one of those, and you can see how it looks like, and you can look, it's just pure MD5, and you can submit a pull request with your article, and then uh, we'll probably review, check for mistakes, but otherwise, uh, if it's related to DSC, we're pretty happy to have some content there. So we're just going to publish it here. And uh, is uh, actually Mike Lombardi around? So I can, no, he's not. Ah, he's okay. Otherwise, I would remind him that uh, I'm waiting for a puppet uh, DSC uh, article here. All right. So also, all the DSC community call usually. Uh, all the DSC community calls are here. So the next one, if you're not too sure, if you can't remember uh, when is the next call, you can come here and usually we update the page and it tells you when the next community call is. So the next one is the 10th of February. And we do that, if you're new, uh, we do that every six weeks and it's always at 12 uh, Pacific time. So it's about, what is it? Uh, 8 p.m. UTC, right? And uh, so these are all the previous one, and you can find for the last one, the recording is here. Usually we try to add them. And there's a lot of content in those that we're not uh, showing enough, but um, some of them, this one was uh, Steve discussing the, uh, the new things coming up in DSC and what they're investing in DSC for PowerShell 7. 
But so there's a lot of content to go through there that is worth probably, uh, if you haven't seen those, if you haven't joined those, uh, check them. What we're trying to do now, and, and that might be new if you're new to the DSC community calls, uh, we're trying to have a quick overview of what's new and some news about DSC. And then that's usually last 10, 15 minutes. And after that, we jump into some content. So a session uh, for about 30 to 40 minutes um, of content. And if you want to present something, let us know. We're always looking for presenters. That's being said, um, we also shared the agenda so you can see what we were, what we are meant to talk about today. Sorry, it's not that one. Uh, next, and then the agenda is done there. And so that's what I shared with you. Moving repositories. So these are the one we're moving from the uh, GitHub PowerShell organization. And I don't know if Michael is around. Uh, hey. maybe. Yeah. Hello. Hey. So the idea is to uh, move those from uh, under the PowerShell organization to the DSC community organization. And yes. what we wanted to ask is, what do we do with them? So those are the ones we know of and uh, we want to move. If there's anything else that uh, you're missing on you say, oh, well, what about this module of, of this resource? Let us know, or then we can uh, ask Michael, or we can ask the PowerShell team, we can ask people uh, if we can move those ones and then own the package in the PowerShell gallery. And if it's something that is coming from the PowerShell team, obviously, or the Microsoft in general. Yeah, I'll probably start the transfer this week and um, leave it up to the, however the community, what, the ones that I'm most interested in are what do we do whenever there's a newer module that supersedes an old one. Um, obviously, it's still there in the gallery. So anybody who goes and clicks on the link to go to the source, we don't want them to go to a dead end. So it's like, do we do we have a new release that just uh, let's people know that there's a newer version of this thing that they should go try out. Um, do we put that on like the readme file? And we should probably just kind of all agree at some point on this is how we handle that situation and then do it very consistently. So it's easily predictable for everyone. Yes. So if if you have some advice on things like feel free to create an issue as I showed you in um, in this repository, usually if we have things we want to discuss with everyone, just open an issue in the dscommunity.org site, dscommunity, dscommunity.org, and then we can discuss what we do with those. And uh, this is a good question Michael asked because this one, as an example, is now being replaced by uh, GADSC. So that's why there's old content and we have a lot of people starting that takes an old uh, blog or something and then they try to find uh, they try to find this information they try to find the uh, the documentation the examples uh, the github repository and they find very old content and then it takes a long time for them to realize that actually this is deprecated still exists still works probably on a 2012 r2 machines with powershell 5.1 but uh, many improvements have been made, many bugs have been fixed in maybe a different version. So this will be transferred. And then if you want to discuss what we do with them, uh, let's head to the Slack and then discuss that on Slack or just open an issue and then we can discuss on the issue. If you try to find us, um, we've created this help and then where to find help and you've got the official documentation, some links there, uh, the DSC forum on the partial.org. And here you've got the DSC Slack and Discord. Um, actually, this is the link for the Slack invitation. If you're not on Slack, you can just go there. Um, but uh, Discord, there's an, there's another way which we haven't shared here, but we will update that. You can also join the same, like there's a bridge between Discord and Slack. So you can join Discord and then uh, it will bridge uh, the channel. So you can type and someone in Slack will see what you what you typed. So if you point someone to where to find help, I would I would suggest going there. If you believe uh, it needs updated, let us know, open an issue or send a pull request. And I think that's about everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, community calls, let's just check. I've said everything in there. 
And Danielle, all yours. Cool. Thank, thanks, Gail. Hey, any just for just before we move on, any any comments or discussion from from the rest of the community? Anyone anyone got anything else they want to uh, throw in or any comments? Hey, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Cool. All right, we'll move on. Hey, I won't I won't take too long. I'm going to share my screen uh, briefly. So. Um, Basically, yeah. So as as uh, as we mentioned, the GitHub team did did say, look, we're changing from the default branch name from from uh, master domain. Uh, same with Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is also going on the same route. Um, this again to reiterate what Gabe was saying is really is is optional to make the change. It's up to the maintainers to make the change. There's no. We wanted to make. We're going to make sure that it, it works with. Uh, both master and main as a branch as a as a default branch name uh, and the tools will continue to work regardless um, but we did need to make a couple of changes to sampler and some bits and pieces to get everything to work just to, to support those parameters so the process is documented here in this blog post i have posted those in the comments um, it looks a little bit daunting at first but it's actually reasonably straightforward um, fundamentally, there are some requirements you need to make sure you've got. For example, you do need to have admin access to the repository um, of the, the upstream repo, so the DSC community repo. Uh, you do need to have administrator access or at least access to the, the project for the CI pipeline in the Azure DevOps um, DSC community organization. Um, to make the, the changes required in there. You will do most of the work on a fork of, in your fork of the upstream um, repository. So in my case, if I'm working on networking DSC, I'll be working, doing most of the work in my fork, uh, doing the changes there, making sure everything works, and then pushing my changes across and doing the rename. Um, but fundamentally, yeah, you, you'll do the work locally on your machine. You'll make changes to files, you'll rename the the main branch, you'll push that those changes up into, into the master branch of the upstream. Um, and then once, and those that will via a PR, the build will fail at this point. We know that, we expect that to fail. Um, so the maintainer will need to merge it regardless, as long as they've done the pull request, the, the code review, and they've just assessed that the changes are okay. If you need help reviewing that, you can tag, I think, probably Johan or myself or, or Gail to to have a look through if you're not comfortable assume, you know, assuming that these changes are safe, we can give you some give you a quick review there. It really is a, a short change. So what I will do is I'll quickly run through the steps and just show what the code change looks like. Um, so the first task is to update, you know, bring your fork down to your local machine and update, make sure it's completely up to date with the upstream. Um, the sec and, and I've already done that, so I've got a copy of my my uh, repo down here on my local machine, which I have made sure is up to date. And the blog post gives you the code to do that, so it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. The second task then is to go through and make the various changes to your repo. The key ones I'm going to go through. I'm going to pop this open. This is what it'll look like once you've made all the changes. It looks daunting at first, but most of these changes are simply changes to the licensing, saying the license, the location of any licenses in the examples is now changed from master domain. So that's usually done by just a global search and replace. But I'll, I'll go through some of the key ones. In the Azure pipelines, this is probably the most extensive change, and this is where we will change the branch trigger from master domain. We also need to make this this uh, subtle change in here, which is really saying, look, only there is a check in the deployment stage that says I will only deploy from from the default branch. In this case, we we actually have to change that the you know, that branch check to to change to main. But we also have a couple of other additional changes, and these are these are to tell sampler or the sampler tasks what the name of the default branch is and this is really for generating things like the 
publishing the release and generating the the change log and, and other information around version numbers for Git version. But you do need do need to add these two variables in each of those those tasks. But again, it's all documented, so it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's one change in the build YAML, and that is to add the main Git branch setting under the DSC test. And that is just to tell uh, DSC resource.tests uh, what the name of that branch is so it can validate things like the the um, the, the uh, code change settings and other kinds of various sort of administrative tasks that happen during a build. Um, obviously, you're adding a change log entry, same as any other release. Um, there is also this change to Git version, which used to be much more complicated, but is now a lot simpler with the newer version of Git version. All you need to do really here is tell uh, Git version the name or the mat the regex for the actual name of the default branch. These at first we thought these needed to be changed. They don't. This is actually sort of a fixed term in Git version. Um, it's not a it, it's not something we can actually change. If you change that to main, everything breaks. Um, you need to change the build branches. You know, if you've got uh, any build badges in your um, in your readme, you just need to change the do a search and replace for that. Just care that you only change those. Sometimes we found a few times where the the word master appears in in the prose of the readme. So just yeah, just take care not to change that, but mostly it's just going to be in these build badges and any term to do with the release um, detail. Um, and nearly there, we changed the license in the manifest. So in the in the module manifest, there is a URL for the, where the license can be found. We just need to change that. Um, and then again, these are all just the examples, just same same thing. We're just changing the URL of the license manifest. And then finally, if the repository supports automated documentation, so that's the wiki generation, uh, you're going to need to change. There's a, usually a mention in the, of the change log. You're going to need to change that there. But it's all fairly straightforward, and I find the easiest way is to simply get the URL uh, there and do a global search and replace um, to main and just do a review of what, well, there's nothing left in there, but that's the that takes care of a good chunk of that. So all in all, once you've done it a couple of times, it can take maybe five or 10 minutes. Um, once you've done that, all those changes, you'll need to commit them. I'm not going to do that now because that's um, I'm not ready to do this particular repo and I don't want to I don't want to take everyone's time with this. The next thing you need to then do is go over to GitHub to your fork. Um, go to the settings and do the rename in the branches. So you can go into your, make sure you're in your fork. I've done this mistakenly in the upstream directly, which is not the end of the world. You can actually go and undo it, but uh, just make sure you do it in your fork first. Change the rename branch, type in main, and you're done. Now it will change any branch protection rules, but because this is my fork, I don't have any. Um, then once you've done that, your next step is to go in, if you've got, and this is a recommended thing, it's it's optional though, if you've set up a build pipeline um, in Azure DevOps against your fork, which is what I tend to do, you will need to go into your um, organization and change your build definition. So the way the way to do that is simply to go find your build, um, go and edit the build. Um, and of course, I'm logged in. They're using the wrong account. Uh, I'm going to go do this in the other in my other org just to go do it over here. So pretend this is my org. Um, and where you're going to need to go down is to the triggers, and this is not an obvious path. We have documented it's not an obvious place. You do then need to head over to the YAML um, and the sources and change this from, actually this is very old, it should have been changed, it should have been, should actually read master now, but that should read main. Again, that's documented in here, so the steps to do that are in here. 
once you've done that in your fork, you should now validate that your pipeline works correctly, but that's up to you whether you choose to, you know, whether you're actually using an upstream Azure DevOps org. Um, you can then submit your PR up against the master branch of the upstream, because of course the upstream is still going to be master. Um, once you've done that, get a code review done. As I said, if you don't have someone who can review code, tag me or, or Johan or, or Gail, and I'm sure we can we can uh, fit a code review in. These are very quick to get the code review as long as you're only doing you know those particular changes. Um, once that's done, we yeah, we, as I said, we're aware that think the the HQRM tests should only be should be the only thing that fail. Um, these are these tests, you know, once you've made the changes to tell the HQRM tests that the, the branch has been renamed, the upstream isn't aware that the branch has the you know the upstream branch has not been renamed yet. So those tests will fail because we've and that's an expect expected break but the rest of your tests should pass. So we'll generally look at those and we'll say, look, if, if the HQRM is the only thing that's failing, we'll approve the, that change and merge it. Once that is done, you can then go ahead and rename the branch in your upstream, in, you, in the actual upstream. So you can go over here and do the rename. Now, the key thing here is that it is going to fix up all your branch policies, branch protection rules, which is awesome. You used to have to do that manually. So now with this new GitHub feature, you can just type in main, rename the branch, and your branch policy will be corrected, um, and everything should be good to go. The final task for you then is to, again, head over here to the, the DSC community um, pipeline for whatever repo you're changing, and perform that set of tasks, which is to head over the pipelines, uh, open up your pipeline. I can actually do it from here. Edit that. Um, ignore this lovely error here, which is telling me it can't find it, uh, and go and change that, those triggers uh, in the YAML. So I would then do main and save that. Now it's not going to let me save that because main doesn't exist, but we need to do that um, so that anytime someone tries to build or do a manual build against that, it, it actually runs against the correct branch. Things won't break if you don't do it, but it just makes things a lot nicer for, for the maintainers. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. There is some, you know, you want to make sure the build, the final build runs, just check that everything works. And then you want to update any your local clone. You know, if you've got a, a, a local um, clone of, um, you know, your upstream, you need to go and update, make sure your branch names are correct for your upstream because you don't want to go accidentally pushing to master on the upstream. So that's pretty much it. We can, as I said, we've done a number of these now, pretty comfortable with the process, and you can get them out in a, you know, in an hour or two if you choose to do it. Again, reiterating, this is optional. It's not a requirement. So that's that's it. Any any thoughts, questions, queries? No one. No one. Feel free to unmute and then tell us if anything. Um, something else I wanted to mention: it's possible that some of the um, some of the API keys to push repository to push the new versions to the uh, partial gallery have expired. Usually, I'm trying to keep an eye on those and renew them. If you see that for some reason uh, the pipeline is not pushing the new versions, then feel free to let me know and I will double check the pipelines. And if you don't have permissions or if you don't know which uh, maintainers to contact, feel free to uh, to contact us again on Slack or uh, wherever you can find us. Usually we're on Slack pretty much uh, all week. So even if we don't reply straight away, uh, we're on different time zones as well. So you just contact us and then someone will get to you eventually. And if not, just ask again. Um, thanks, Dan. That was perfect. Um, there's, ah, oh, there was one thing I thought of during the presentation and I forgot. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All this. Ah, never mind. Um, so, 
just if you see my screen now. So the next community call is going to be on the 10th of February. Um, again, we have one every six weeks. Feel free to let us know if there's content you'd like to see, and then we can ask uh, maybe uh, Thomas to uh, do it for us, or we can ask anyone. And if you if you have some content to do, feel free to uh, propose something as well, and then say, oh, I'd like to do like a five minutes demo of what I'm doing, and then maybe discuss with some people if they have a different approach. Uh, we can use as well this to show how people are using it, or maybe ask questions how you would like to use it how you would like to use DSC, maybe using DSC with other uh, tools, maybe using DSC with uh, Ansible, with uh, Puppet and uh, Salt. I've seen some people discussing that on the DevOps uh, channel. So, so just feel free, uh, feel free to, um, Oh yeah, call maintainers. That's the one. <laughs> that's, that's exactly the one I was thinking about. Um, so uh, we also, uh, we also want to, to remind everyone that we're always looking for maintainers, contributors, and reviewers. If you don't feel like you want to commit to be a maintainer, that doesn't mean you can't contribute. Um, we not only we want pull requests, but we love to see people doing reviews. And even if uh, you don't have the permissions to approve or to merge, you can always review or give feedback when there's a pull request. And many people doing contributing are new, so sometimes it's um, it's relatively simple changes. Sometimes it's just things. And when someone else then um, then say Johan has already reviewed, it takes much less time for us to just go back and say, okay, yes, yeah, this person already reviewed it. Quick check, everything's done. Tick the box, and then we just approve. So feel free to do some reviews. So then it's going to help everyone, and then. One day, like if you've helped some others and one day you want to do a quick pull request or you want to ask someone else, you know, you will be remembered for helping doing code reviews. So please, 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 if you've got some spare time, just look at pull requests in maybe repositories, you know, um, and then first of all, you will learn a lot by looking at how the code works underneath and also uh, by just doing a quick review of what the change is. Maybe you will suggest better ideas or you will open discussions for uh, the person contributing, the opening the pull request, and having some fresh pair of eyes uh, over problems, issues, always help. So feel free, and, and it's encouraging to see other people's understands what we're doing. So please, 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 if you have a bit of spare time or you'd like to contribute, just any pull request, any issue, just have a look, respond, ask for more details, and like, and maybe sometimes just tell us, hey, uh, we I've seen this pull request hasn't been touched in six months. Just come on the Slack channel and then let us know, and then we can have a look. Mm. Yeah, and and, and it, is it Gail? Is it worth us sort of listing that the 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 repos that have got the most? You're going through the you know the community repos that have got the most outstanding issues or the most open PRs and saying look like those are those are some of the ones we could give you a hand in because there's there are you know xps desired state configuration got a lot of stuff that going on in there and we just need a lot of help in that area um and you know computer management there's always active di directory d um, dsc's always got huge amounts going on they need you know the more support we can get the the more we can get those prs through and i think this time of year for some of us we're we've all been a bit snowed under so apology i'm going to say apologies for myself sure. i have been a bit a bit slow in getting some of those prs through on on um networking and certificate dsc yes but i don't want to limit people saying hey these are the ones we really want some contributions no, we no. want contributions everywhere so if there's a technology you're using day to day if there's something like i don't know if you're very familiar with dns as an example then looks look at uh, was it xdns server, server i think yeah yeah xdns server and if you're familiar with dhcp look at the dhcp one actually i think it's just been released but but that that's the one like don't limit yourself that it's not because there's a lot of contributions already that we need more contributions we need contributions everywhere so if you're familiar if you like something if you uh, if you know the code that you, you already know your way in the powershells for let's say dns then then that's probably one which is easy to get started with and if you have questions if you anything just just let us know but i think most of you we've seen before 
or we so we see in the chat uh, we see questions being asked so feel free to just join us and 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 the DSC community goals is also, also a good uh, opportunity if you have questions whether related to what we discussed today or just more generic uh, around DSC or other te related technologies feel free feel free to open up uh, the questions for everyone and for the next one you can also add it to the agenda so then you will have the recording later anything people want to discuss I want to say before we close this one off so if um so you've seen Michael I don't know if everyone's familiar with Michael so uh, Michael you can just maybe because the new year you can remind everyone who you are and what you do me yes <laughs> hey I'm yeah, Michael this, Green yeah, this... <clears throat> yeah we can do a round of introductions uh yeah I'm Michael Green and um so I'm the principal program manager in Microsoft Azure for uh, effectively the division for configuration management inside servers. Um, but I own the solution named Guest Configuration, and we're actually hoping to have a lot of news to share this semester. Um, we work in what we call semesters, which is six month blocks of time um, about new capabilities and services, both in Azure and services that can connect to machine or clients being able to um, machines being able to connect to services from outside of Azure. Uh, so hybrid services um, and in both cases we'll have a lot of new stuff going on this semester. So I'm pretty excited about it. Thank you. So if you have questions for Michael, uh, those DSC community calls are also a very good opportunity. Or feedback. I Michael's that, always, uh, always up for feedback. I am 100% always up for feedback, and I saw Thomas Maurer joined. Uh, he and I are planning on doing some videos over the next few months, uh, so that'll be a good source. Uh, I'm also going to be doing some more blog posts um, as these things start coming out, but uh, we're hoping to have more and more video content as we go forward. That just seems like a nice way to consume information that uh, wasn't I think it was popular, you know, back in the Channel 9 days, and then it kind of shifted yeah. to blogs, and then now I think we're maybe back to video. So, Yes, looking forward to it. I'm probably going to do a few as well. I have a few in mind. And uh, Thomas, I, I said on the chat you didn't reply, but uh, if you want to present as well at the DSC community call, feel free to uh, uh, talk to us, and uh, we'll, we'll find a session you can do. Or you can... Yeah, maybe maybe in six weeks. Thanks. No worries. All right. If no one has anyone any question, or oh, should we close that call and then see you all in six weeks? Related to DSC, uh, there are there have been I've, I've been actively working on the baseline management module that converts uh, group policy to DSC. So keep an eye on the preview releases coming out there. I'm, I'm not usually merging to, to main and um, shipping as stable in the gallery until it's had at least 30 days. But um, new pre-release versions have been coming out pretty regularly, uh, basically just updating to work better with PowerShell Core, um, making sure it's using all the latest resources. And then that module has always had the ability to convert either uh, individual policies or to run inside of windows in a domain joined machine and query wmi see which group policies are in scope for the machine uh, and then collectively converts the effective group policies for that machine into one dsc config and then um, i haven't checked this in yet but most recently i did the same using the actual group policy commandlets so you can pick uh, an organizational unit in active directory and say I want a DSC configuration that represents um, the proper inheritance and enforcement effects for group policies reaching that OU. Um, so I'll, I'll move that over and get it checked in as pre-release. Um, and then also the community actually has helped a lot with the GP registry policy parser module, which is how those .pol files get converted over. Um, and so a, a new pre-release just shipped of that yesterday. And I'm working on, um, so right now, baseline management and guest configuration modules are signed using a Microsoft cert. I'm working on adding GP registry policy parser uh, into a pipeline as well. And then um, I noticed, I think Chase and Brian, I don't know if Jason made the call or not, um, but for many of the 
um, the modules uh, that are used by those um, to sort of fulfill the scenario. Uh, since the maintainers for those are also Microsoft employees, I don't see any reason why we couldn't set up a signing pipeline and get, I'm a big fan of trying to get as many of these things signed using a cert as possible. So uh, we'll keep that momentum going, hopefully. I was actually working on that for the DSC community over Christmas. Very I forgot cool. about it. And then, yes, I was, I was, you just remember that, oh yeah, I was nearly done with this for, for sampler, for the, for the template we're using. So yeah, uh, if that's of interest, obviously just, just let us know. So then we can prioritize because that was a side project for Christmas. And then I forgot about it until now. That's a lot of how baseline management happened also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we discussed that just before the Christmas. Oh yeah, we're gonna have some downtime. We can do some work. <laughs> All right, signing, I'll put it back on the list. All right, so thanks, Michael. Um, and actually, that was, uh, I forgot as well uh, the baseline management because maybe you can send, uh, someone can send the link, share the link here. And uh, so then uh, baseline management commission tool, I think I've got it here. There we go. And I, I think actually that's uh, someone on the Slack channel in the DevOps uh, channel. Uh, they asked for doing something like this to be able to do it uh, in Salt Stack, uh, Salt Slack, Stack, Salt Stack, Salt. And um, and actually I forgot about mentioning this one, so I'm going to paste that one as well. Since he's not note, here, I'm, I'm going to throw him under the bus and say, uh, let's invite Jason Helmut to come present for the next community call. Ah, true. And maybe I'm going to present something with him uh, uh, on. So, you know, he's been working on Crescendo. We'll we'll see we'll see uh, we'll see in next uh, DSC community call. Awesome. There might be something there. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. If you have any questions, feel free to reach us on Slack or um, change the agenda for uh, next DMC community call, which is the I forgot the date already, February. I said it earlier. Never mind. It's going to go uh, PC lag on the 10th of February. No, that's not possible. <laughs> I just realized now this is not possible. In six weeks, I will update it. And as always, you can follow us on Twitter as well. On that note, thank you. And Daniel, you can stop the recording. Cool. Thank you, everyone.